metabolism and antioxidant effects. And I feel like this topic is pretty relevant, especially this time of year, because us seniors are going to be graduating, and you family and friends and professor, you're going to be celebrating with us, whether at the VR or going downtown College Ave. Alcohol might be a part of the celebration, so my goal of my talk is to help you understand just a little bit more of what you're going to be consuming in these celebrations. So for starters, alcohol is an organic compound, and it is found often in beer, wine, and malt liquor, and it's often known as a psychoactive drug. And consuming alcohol, as some may know, it tends to make you just a little bit confused, and although I might not be able to help you get unconfused while drinking alcohol, hopefully I'll clear up some things about alcohol metabolism in your body. When it comes to alcohol toxicology, I'm going to be talking about a lot of bad things that a lot of alcohol can do, but that doesn't really mean that alcohol is bad itself. So as you can see, when you have just a little bit of alcohol, it can make you a little goody, and then when you drink more and more, you can feel sleepy, and it has the potential of making you unconscious, and you could possibly die from too much alcohol. So moral of the story, you are in charge of how alcohol affects your body, and it the toxic effects that comes from alcohol, it's not because of alcohol itself, maybe, but more because of the dose that you have it in. So the dose makes the poison. And in these higher toxic effects of alcohol, you'll see it could affect the brain by causing headaches, delusions, memory loss, paranoia, nerve damage, and also a decreased IQ. Alcohol has the effect on muscles by making them weaker and also causing atrophy by making them smaller, causing spasms and also tenderness. Alcohol toxicity impairs the senses, so in, um, it could cause impaired vision, hearing, smell, taste, motor skills, also pain perception and sexual performance. Alcohol toxicity has an effect on the intestines by causing ulcers, cancer, nausea, diarrhea, and also vomiting and inflammation. In the pancreas, alcohol has an effect on the hormone insulin, which is in charge of glucose absorption, and which causes the effect of um, a possible risk for diabetes. In your reproductive organs, alcohol can have an effect by causing impetus and also fertility problems. In the bones, it can cause them to be weak and brittle and thinner and break down. And finally, in the heart, alcohol toxicity can cause it to be weak and fatty, causing high blood pressure and increased risk of heart attack, and also an irregular heartbeat. So some of the basics of alcohol, you know, when you see alcohol and you're going to drink it, it starts often in the mouth, as everybody knows. But maybe what you don't know is it happens in the body after that. So from the mouth, it goes down to the esophagus into the gastrointestinal tract. <clears throat> from the esophagus, it goes to the stomach, where about 20% of the alcohol is absorbed. And then from the stomach, it goes right to the small intestine, where the rest of it is absorbed. And it's absorbed into the blood, and then from the blood, it gets pumped to the heart. And then the heart pumps it to everywhere else in the body, to all the different organs. And the first stop is the brain. And then it goes to the liver and then pretty much everywhere else. So after a night of drinking, you might hear somebody say, like, oh, I really damaged my liver tonight. Well, I'm gonna be telling you why exactly that is. So as I said, alcohol goes through the digestive tract, gets into the blood, and then it goes to the liver where it's detoxified. Specifically in the liver, it goes to the liver cells, which are called hepatocytes. And this is what a typical cell looks like. The most important little organelles that are in these cells that I'm going to be emphasizing are the endoplasmic reticulum and also the mitochondria. And these are the two organelles that are really important in alcohol metabolism. So like I said, then the alcohol, once it's in the cells, it goes to the smooth ER. And that's what it looks like. And on the smooth ER, it goes to an enzyme called a cytochrome P450, specifically the type called CYP2E1. And this is what a cytochrome P450 looks like. I'll explain in a little bit what exactly it is. But it's an enzyme that alcohol attaches to right here, and then it helps metabolize the alcohol. 
Unfortunately, in cytochrome-based alcohol metabolism in the CYP2E1, it causes the generation of ROS, or reactive oxygen species. And these reactive oxygen species are what's in charge of the liver, liver damage that we all talk about and are fearing about after a long night of drinking. So the alcohol starts here as a hepo um, toxic drug, and then it goes into the cytochrome P450 for metabolism, which causes toxic metabolites when it's being metabolized. And then the toxic metabolites are what's in charge of the reactive oxygen species that causes the damage in the cell. And these go then to the other cells around the liver and then causes liver damage. So this diagram might look a little confusing, but this is all the pathways that alcohol can be metabolized in the body. But specifically, we're looking at this one, like I mentioned, that occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum. And it is the one that I'm focusing on because it's the one that causes the reactive oxygen species generation seen here. Okay, so what are all these cytochrome P450s that I've been talking about? Well, cytochrome P450s are a huge family of enzymes that are in charge of metabolic processes. And these metabolic processes, including the oxidation of organic substances like drugs, fats, steroids, and toxins that enter the body. And without these cytochrome P450s, the body won't be able to break them down and to get rid of them. And in these cytochrome P450s, the active site where the drugs, lipids, or alcohol they stick to is the heme iron center. So that's the little sticky part in the P450 that is the basis for metabolism. And as I said, the cytochrome P450s are found in the membranes of the mitochondria and the endoplasmic reticulum. The specific mechanism that the cytochrome P450s metabolize alcohol by is alcohol attaches to the cytochrome P450 at that iron sticky part. And then from there, it goes into a cycle of oxidative and reduction reactions, which basically just means electrons are being added and removed in the process of breaking the alcohol down into a substance that's more bodily friendly that the body can use. Unfortunately, in this process, there are unfriendly things being produced, which are the ROS, or the reactive oxygen species, as a result of alcohol metabolism. So what are these ROS? No, it's not the character from Friends that everybody knows and loves, but it's actually a natural byproduct of alcohol metabolism. And it's, or just oxygen metabolism in general. It sometimes can be a good thing because it's used for cell signaling and homeostasis in the body, but it's a really bad thing when these reactive oxygen species, or ROS, builds up and it can cause damage in the body and damage the cells. These are examples of reaction, reactive oxygen species and they have really reactive oxygen, which means that they are really, really hungry for anything that they can get an electron from. And oftentimes, it's DNA, which causes damage in the body. And here's a diagram of reactive oxygen species. They come from mitochondria or the endoplasmic reticulum, like we were saying. And then it could be used for a good way, modulating signaling pathways in the body. However, I'm going to be focusing on the negative effects because generally alcohol toxicity, there's a buildup of reactive oxygen species and they cause DNA damage and also they cause um, the reactive oxygen species to attack lipids and proteins in the body breaking down the cells. So another source of reactive oxygen species is found in the electron transport chain, which is how the, the body gets its energy. And the electron transport chain in cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria. And as you can see, the mitochondria is a part of the pathway of alcohol metabolism. And this is where the body gets its energy by taking the electron carriers that are produced by alcohol metabolism. So basically this is kind of like a chain of hot potato of the different enzymes that are in the electron transport chains. So an electron is dumped off by an electron carrier to these enzymes and then it goes one by one to each of these, finally to the last one to make 
ATP, which is a body and spirits energy. One of the most important players in cellular respiration in the electron transport chain is cytochrome C oxidase. And here, this is gonna be really important. I'll talk about it a little bit, a little bit, so please remember it. And this is where oxygen is converted into water. And when it's consuming oxygen, that's how the cell is getting its energy. However, in the um, instance where there's too much alcohol metabolism and too many electron carriers, there often is a buildup of electrons that attack the oxygen that the body needs to use for respiration. And this is the source of the ROS, or reactive oxygen species, in the electron transport chain. So just kind of to recap what I was saying about cytochrome-based alcohol metabolism, alcohol starts by being metabolized by the cytochrome P450 called the CYP2P1 enzyme, which then creates oxygen radicals and causes oxidative stress in the body. So what do we do about all this ROS? So you drink some alcohol, it metabolizes it, and you get reactive oxygen species. Is there anything we can do about it? Well, yeah, luckily for us, there are antioxidants found in plants, such as fruits and vegetables, and it, the body also produces antioxidants naturally, like glutathione or GSH, and that's also gonna be important in a little bit. So remember that glutathione or GSH is a good antioxidant. And what antioxidants do is kind of what it sounds like. It's anti-oxy or oxygen species. So these antioxidants have a lot of electrons that these hungry reactive oxygen species need to be happy. So instead of these free radicals attacking, say, our DNA or other parts of our cells, these antioxidants are going to give it the electrons that they need, and so then neutralizing them. And when antioxidants are doing their job, they scrounge around finding the free radicals that are in the body and neutralize them, stopping from damage from occurring. So this made me think of um, the paper I wanted to read that has to do with the uh, alcohol toxicity and its effect on cellular respiration, specifically the cytochrome C oxidase. And the basis for this paper is that they know that alcohol toxicity causes cellular respiration damage, but they don't really know exactly what the target of this damage is and how the reactive oxygen species is caused. Um, the potential players that they have in mind are the cytochrome P450, specifically the CYP2D1 enzyme that is in charge of alcohol metabolism, that's here, and then also the cytochrome C oxidase that I talked about earlier, which is one of the key players in this electron transportation of or hot potato of electrons to try to make energy for the body. Some of the methods that they did in this study was that they did a cell culturing by taking different kinds of cells. They took cells from a green African green monkey, which naturally has the CYP2E1 enzyme in that, and then they took those cells and they bathed them in 25 to 100 micromolars of alcohol for about two days, or whatever it took to induce the toxic effect. And they also took Hep G2 cells, which are human liver cells, and they used those um, for four days. They bathed them in 300 micromolars of alcohol. But with these cells, they were looking at specific types of these Hep G2 cells, a wild type, where they're just normal liver cells. And then they transduced it with CYP2E1, which just made sure that this type of cell line had more of the cytochrome P450 that we're looking at. They also did an assay of the electron transport chain activity, so just seeing how well the, the cells were uh, undergoing cell respiration. And what they did was take the mitochondrial extract from the control and from the alcohol-treated cells, and they looked at them specifically under a UV vis spectrometry. And what they were looking for is um, ox or cytochrome C oxidase reduction, which is seen at um, 550 nanometers. And then what they also did with these cells was they took antioxidants that were specific for the mitochondria, and they took the CYP2E1 inhibitor to see if those had any effect on the um, electron transport chain. So some of the results of the test that they, that they did, they wanted to first show that yes, alcohol does have an effect on cellular respiration, and they proved that by the control cells having a greater um, OCR, which means oxygen consumption rate, 
than the cells that that had ethanol induced in them. And then the cells that were treated with alcohol or ethanol, their oxygen consumption rate or ability to um, undergo cellular respiration was much, much lower. And it's also interesting to note when there is an increase in cytochrome P450 or CYP2E1, this ability to um, undergo cell respiration is significantly diminished. And then like I said earlier, the dose makes the poison. And over here, you can see that this is just a lower dose of alcohol, but it still does significantly impact cell respiration. So overall, in general, Mito mitochondrial targeted CYP2E1 alcohol metabolism is shown to significantly inhibit cell respiration. Specifically, they were looking at the cytochrome C oxidase, so part of the cellular respiration system, and they wanted to see what alcohol's effect was. And they saw in the cells that were induced with ethanol, seen in white, that cytochrome C oxidase was significantly inhibited. And as you remember, cytochrome C oxidase was in, an important part of how the cell gets its energy. So if it's inhibited when there's alcohol, that means cells aren't getting the energy that they need. And they showed that alcohol did significantly decrease it, especially when there is more CYP2E1 and thus CYP2E1 metabolism involved. They also wanted to test the role that the cytochrome P450, CYP2E1, and ROS had on the cytochrome C oxidase dysfunction, and they did this by adding the antioxidants that would suck up the ROS, and also an inhibitor to the CYP enzyme that would stop it from metabolizing. And what they saw from that was that with just ethanol, the cytochrome C oxidase activity was inhibited, like we just saw. However, in the presence of antioxidants, the cytochrome C oxidase functioning was restored to normal levels where nothing was nothing was added. Also, they found that if they inhibited the cytochrome P450 in charge of alcohol metabolism, they saw that there was also an increase of cytochrome C oxidase function. So in general, that they saw mitochondrial antioxidants and the CYP2E1 inhibitor prevented the loss of cytochrome C oxidase activity that happened with alcohol metabolism and alcohol toxicity. So the results of this study was just that alcohol causes cytochrome C oxidase dysfunction causing cellular respiration to be inhibited. And it's important to note that when there was an increased amount of CYP2E1, it caused greater dysfunction. And they found that the CYP2E1 inhibitor increased cytochrome C oxidase function. And that when there were antioxidants involved, those decreased the amount of reactive oxygen species and thus improving the cytochrome C oxidase functioning. So what do we do about antioxidant, um, what do we do about alcohol toxicity? So alcohol toxicity essentially induces cytochrome C oxidase dysfunction. Like I said, causes a decreased amount of energy the body has because it's not undergoing cell respiration. We talked about antioxidants and how those have an effect on kind of sucking up the reactive oxygen species. So it made me think between Dr. Dave and bio, chemistry class is always saying, you have to eat plants and that'll make everything better. And talking to my roommate who would always drink tea every day and I never really understood because who drinks tea? But she told me that they were really good antioxidants and that's why I think. I wonder what green tea antioxidants would do with alcohol toxicity. And then I found this paper that just tested that and how the, um, the chemical in green tea called EGCG, how it affects alcohol toxicity. And the model that they used in this paper was they used, instead of just like dousing cells in a bowl of or alcohol, they made a model inducing the, cyto the toxic effect using arachidonic acid and iron, which is kind of manipulating the toxic environment that alcohol toxicity causes. And they knew that alcohol toxicity decreases cell viability, causes cell morphology changes, and it um, causes ROS production. And it decreases GSH, or as we remember, glutathione, which was a powerful antioxidant in the body. 
So these are all the tests that they did to see how EGCG has an effect on the effects alcohol toxicity has on the body. They tested the effect on CYP2E1 activity, also cell viability, morphology changes, ROS production, and GSH levels. Some of the methods they did, they took a cell culturing of HEP-G2 cells, kind of like the last study, and they induced those with the toxic environment of the iron and the arachidonic acid, plus then adding EGCG. They did a cytotoxicity assay, just saying like how healthy was the cell and how it was functioning, and they tested that by the production of a formazon salt, which is naturally produced in the mitochondria. And they, all, they also looked at the cell morphology by looking under the microscope at the cells. Then they took a CYP2E1 activity assay just to see how EGCG affected um, cytochrome P450 metabolism. And normal me metabolism is taking ethanol and turning it into acetaldehyde. And they just wanted to see how much acetaldehyde was produced. Um, and that will show if this cytochrome P450 is functioning. Other things that they did was they took a glutathione level test and they just measured the concentration of glutathione to see if that was affected at all. And they measured the amount of reactive oxygen species using fluorescence and um, with something that was less in the presence of reactive oxygen species. So th for the results, they found that EGCG improved cell morphology. So if you compare where there was nothing added and it's not in a toxic environment, it looks pretty close to when it is in a toxic environment with the addition of EGCG. And this is these are the cells just in the toxic environment. So this is showing that EGCG improves cell morphology by making them look more normal. They found that EGCG does not inhibit cytochrome P450 activity um, because this is when there is no addition of EGCG and that kind of looks the same as when they did add EGCG. And this is actually a known inhibitor of CYP2E1. And so you can see that EGCG didn't really stop that from occurring, but it must work some other way to protect against alcohol toxicity. They found that EGCG increases the cell viability. So here is where there is low levels of EGCG, and as EGCG levels are increased, the cell viability or just the overall health of the cell is significantly increased. They found that EGCG restores the glutathione levels. So here is an a normal cell where nothing was added, it was not in a toxic environment. And then here's the glutathione levels for a cell in a toxic environment. And as you can see, with the addition of EGCG, or having some green tea, it improves the glutathione levels to over the control level amounts. So EGCG increases the cellular antioxidants significantly. And then finally they found that EGCG decreases the amount of reactive oxygen species being produced. So here's the, um, the toxic environment. This is the amount of reactive oxygen species produced. And then the, in the toxic environment with EGCG, that was decreased by 46%, showing that the EGCG kind of sucked up the reactive oxygen species that was present, showing that EGCG decreases the reactive oxygen species in the toxic environment. So in conclusion, EGCG protects against alcohol toxicity. It's downstream of CYP2E1, which means it doesn't stop CYP2E1 from metabolizing the alcohol. It still metabolizes the alcohol, but EGCG works more of just cleaning up the act and um, cleaning up the mess that these enzymes make in metabolism. And it does that by decreasing the reactive oxygen species production, and it restores the glutathione levels and increasing the amount of antioxidants to also decrease the amount of reactive oxygen species. So which made me think for further re research, I thought it would be interesting. So what if they took alcohol and then put EGCG in it? I think that would be a really interesting um, area of research to see if that drinking alcohol with tea and it kind of balances out the effects. It'll be interesting to know whether it's possible or not. I'm not quite sure, but it'll be interesting. So moral of the story is to drink responsibly, 
Moderation is key and have some tea. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Dave, who like I said, would always tell me to eat more plants and that kind of sparked my interest in antioxidants and how that works and um, protecting the body against its, the reactive oxygen species as a result of many metabolic processes that the body has. I'd also like to thank the whole LU Science Department by having a beautiful facility and a great environment to learn, my friends and teammates for keeping me safe the last four years, and also my family for giving me this opportunity and supporting me. Any questions? So now you've kind of separated out plants and alcohol, but if I'm familiar enough with my alcohol, most of it's made from plants. Yes. So you're standing next to some wine made from, from some grapes, and you know your vodka, yeah, whiskeys are, are made from corn. So what? Yeah. So what? So 
If antioxidants are so great at preventing alcohol toxicity, why do I get a hangover? Well, it, this, won't, this usually doesn't happen to you young folks, but it's older folks. <laughs> when we start, you'll notice as you age, you get more interesting hangovers. So I, never, I just had one glass of red wine and I feel awful the next morning. But it's got lots of antioxidants in it. Um. I don't think there might not be enough antioxidants or the right kind that would take the reactive oxygen species and damage out of the body. Okay. Good question. Brielle, do you know how B vitamins might play in part in contribution with the, um, the reactive oxygen species? Well, I know we would always talk about B vitamins and biochemistry of how taking your B vitamins before you drink. I think. That was mostly in regards to having um, a substrate that kind of soaks up some of the alcohol. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Dave. I'm not. NADH. NADH. <laughs> what, vi what B vitamin is that? What? What B vitamin is NADH? Thiamine. No. Niacin. Niacin. Right. <laughs> and so that's in the that's in the energy utilization. Sorry, I'm just like so awkward. Right Brielle's like, <laughs> got her. <laughs> Any other questions? Let's thank our speaker then.